Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Um, hope you're having um, a lovely day today. The weather certainly in the UK is very promising. If you're watching from else elsewhere, it might be a different story, but finally summer has arrived. Finally, we've only been waiting for um, the last two, three months for a bit of sunshine, a bit of warmth. So um, we're here today because we um, it's this time of the month, 1st of June 2021, where we are unwrapping the um, Makers Boxes, which of course at the moment we have got three. One is our uh, Makers Box, which usually makes an animal. Um, we've got our Fairy Box, which has been going for just over one year now. And we've got our Surprise Box, which is the one sort of in the middle that's been going um, just over two years. And um, the themes today are the Surprise Box is ice cream, just perfect for this weather now so you'll love what's inside I absolutely love it and um, the fairy is a water fairy very appropriate for summer as well um, and of course we've got the Dartmoor pony which makes one pony I should be very clear about this even though two are on display um, but you have got a choice of making a different uh, colored pony from what is here but also you could make either of those so um, let's have a quick look who's watching today. And of course, it is the 1st of June. Um, and if you're watching this live, then you'll see it first here. Yeah. But you can re-watch this on Thursday at 7 p.m., which on which we usually restream on Facebook. So you can watch again. In a, in a way, you can watch it live again. It will be um, monitored by one, of, by one of my colleagues, by Hannah in, uh, specifically. And um, she'll be there to, um, to help you out with any comments and questions that you may have if you're watching this on Facebook on Thursday, which is the 3rd of June. But today we're here now and I'm going to check who's here today. So we have got lots of people watching already. Um, we've got Sandra and Diane and Ashley, Carol, Kim, Nina, Eva, Catherine, Awkward Prawn, Jane, um, Heather is there, Vampire Venom, Meg, Alicia is there. Hi, Alicia. Um, oh, she's watching me on the big TV. <laughs> oh dear, don't look too close. Um, Michael is there. Betsy is there. Erica, Pamela from Silverton, Oregon. That's probably the furthest um, so far. Um, Joe is there and Laura, Annie, Denise and Caroline. And Emma is um, here to um, answer any questions that you may have in the comments or whisper in my ear, literally. And um, let's get started. We're going to start today with the... Um, let's do a different order. Let's start with the surprise box. So the surprise box today, or all this month, is um, the theme is ice cream. And um, it probably doesn't leave too much of your imagination to guess what might be in there. Now, last time when I opened this box, I accidentally, not this one, but the main one, accidentally had the overhead camera on and you and 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 the and the box moved while I was gooing, gooing and eyeing and cooing and whatnot over um, the contents and you saw a little bit too much. So I'm not going to do this. But what I will say is, if you don't know this yet, we have got a new Facebook group called the Makers Surprise Box Spoiler Group. And uh, you can join this, but you have to be prepared to get the surprise spoil. So for some of you, that may mean you won't have it first time when you open the box. But I, for example, I hate surprises. I really need to know what's going on. So um, just, yeah, it's just, if you know it, just let me know it. So if you're one of those, then uh, you can now know what's in the box. It might make uh, the, the decision for you to, um, to, to subscribe. So if you're not a subscriber yet, definitely join the group so you can get a taste of what these boxes are like. And um, if you are already a subscriber and you're debating, oh, I don't know if I should get this month, then of course this will swing you definitely in the right direction, in your right direction, hopefully in our right direction as well. So this month it's the um, ice cream one. And um, we have got, for all of our subscription boxes, we have a sub box discount code. You can um, get this discount code with um, by just putting sub um, Oh, what is it called again? I've forgotten now what the sub, sub, what is the sub code thingy me bob? Oh, well, it's somewhere in there. Um, sub club, that's it. Couldn't think of the name. Sub club. And um, if you're a subscriber, you get 
the um, uh, get 20% off on a whole of a collection of different products and they are really amazing. So in June they are all the silk clay, all the cotton covered steel wire, all the um, aluminium wire, all the black and gold thin copper wire, the large peacock butterfly pack. This is the big one um, that was a maker's box in the past. So if you've missed out on a maker's box, this is your op opportunity to get one um, with a 20% discount. The sea otter and the baby pack. Um, sorry, the sea otter and baby pack. Let's just, uh, that's one product, not two. I thought, what's a baby pack? We don't have a baby pack. It's the sea otter and baby pack, that way around. The woodland wreath kit plus the fibre and product of the month, which um, you can um, you can see separately on this newsletter as well. It's our, also our sixth birthday. Happy birthday to the makers. And there will be lots and lots of stuff happening this month. So watch out for that as well. Um, so we've got lots of... Uh, let's just talk about this. Right, so I'm getting engrossed in, in our um, newsletter, which is always very colourful and wonderful to watch. Even even though I know what's in it, I still like to see it. So I'm not going to show you what's inside the box. To see. I'm not even going to the overhead camera. But what I will say is, it really does make me want to go and um, have an ice cream now. Um, lanolin, um, Rich... Core wool is our fiber of the month. If you've not tried it, you don't know what you're missing, but you're getting a little sample so you can have a little a little try. I just keep coming back to it. We're actually using it in the Dartmoor ponies as well, so you're going to get lots in there to make your pony. And then we have got in here this time um, five very lush fibers. It's very wool heavy, this one. Um, but uh, it's uh, I just wish I could show it to you, but it's it's just very nice. It's just ice cream colors, ice cream themes, ice cream everything, tops and bats, and that's all I'm gonna tell you now. For everything else, you've got to get the box or join our um our spoiler group on Facebook. Right, that's the surprise box done and dusted. Oh, put that newsletter back in there. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more what's happening this month because that's always a changeover on the first of each month. So there will be new products and new things happening. But that's the surprise box. So remember to get that one. Remember all of our um, subscription boxes are... We don't tie you in a contract. It is come The payment comes out regularly, but you can skip payments. So if you don't fancy a box one month, then you can skip several months even. Um, you can unsubscribe anytime. We don't tie you in a contract. We want you to have the box. We don't want you to feel obliged to get it and um, or even forced to get it. We'd never do that to you. And you can also change the payment date. So if you're getting it right at the end of the month, but you want the box right at the beginning, then just hop onto your, hop onto your account and you can, from there you can change all kinds of um, details to get um, such as the change the payment date change your payment method if your card runs out then you've got to update that on there as well and of course also skip boxes if you don't want them or add new ones better still so let's go to the fairy box fairy box next as I said it's the water fairy um, she is actually really lovely so she has got um, wet felted wings with extra decorations that you put on afterwards. The wings are made from the um, seashell shimmer. So I had her out in the sunlight earlier and it really is lovely and sparkly and there's some um, some uh, non-plant, non-animal um, fibers in there as well. This is a new top. It's our turquoise blue top. Really beautiful multicolored top. You get little details to sew onto her or, or, or glue onto, onto her hair, which are these little, little sparkly shells. She has got our midnight um, rainbow drops dress with, again, with lots of sort of watery features. And she's holding a, a piece of sea glass and she's got a, a little bead um, belt going around her waist as well. So that's basically um, the the water fairy. Let's have a look inside the box and then I will show you some of the little knacks. And in fact, what I will do today is I will wet felt the wings. For this, I will go to the overhead camera because you're meant to see what's inside. So that's the fairy box. They always come in a, in a large letter um, box. So it fits through your letter box. If you're not at home, then you can still receive the box and I just have to open with this one is so full we actually had to double sellotape it up 
we couldn't um yeah we, it was impossible just to put a maker stickers on on this one it is bulging you can feel it look it's bulging it's popping open as we speak with our surprise with our um with all of our boxes in um the the, the fairy box and the maker's box you get a little newsletter that maybe um puts you in the frame of mind of making a water fairy so um that's on this one it we we sort of i don't know if you noticed it but often we use the tops that she's got as hair as a dress so we've done it the other way around always tells you what's coming up the next month so this this one is the um this camera never zooms in come on zoom in no it's not doing it it's the dragonfly fairy an absolute favorite of mine they always are, everything is is a favorite of mine as soon as i make them then i love them more than anything else and uh, you get of course the instructions now if you're a first time subscriber you also get the uh, basic needle uh, basic fair, uh, fairy and figure instructions that you will need to follow on with a specific fairy that um, you're getting um, in that month so i haven't got this here with me now but if you're a first time subscriber you will get these basic instructions it gives you a list of um, of the different materials that you need in there it's a massive long list always is with the fairies you get lots of little bits and pieces and um, and then you have the step-by-step -step instructions that usually pick up from where the basic instructions have ended and um, on the back are the wet felted wings which is what I'm going to show you today but let's just have a look inside what is in the box so a whole big bag of fairy accessories um, these um, lovely seashell shapes there's a piece of sea glass in there everybody's getting a different color sea glass so it might you might get a white one to maybe a pale blue one to a darker blue one turquoise we haven't um, we're not in control of this they come in mixed batches so we just put one in um, each of the boxes uh, you get some of the larger um, rhinestones in there to decorate um, the, the, the dress to your liking and then you've got that little um, pearl um, necklace or bead chain or whatever you want to call it in there as well you always get a felting needle in your fairy box um, this one has got a medium felting needle in there and then the, the wool is just lined up nicely like that so Starting from the left here, you get the um, the core wool, which you will need to build up the size of the head. So that is um, there for that. You also need a pipe cleaner, which is hiding underneath here. So you get one pipe cleaner in this one. You build up the head, then you cover the head with um, this, this uh, flesh pink um, um, South American top that's in there. You have got the royal blue New Zealand merino in there. You've got the midnight um, rainbow drops wool in there for her dress then you have got the color for her hair which is beautiful absolutely a lovely um multi-colored turquoisey you just reminds you of the sea of the sea and water in general and then you have all the makings for the wings which i'm going to keep out because that's what i'm going to use to show you how to make the wings um fits all in the box usually with a bit of a squish and a squeeze huge amount of wool we never shortchange you we're always very generous with with our with our wool um and um and that will help you to make the mm, water fairy right that's so far um now the fairy box and uh, which is namely the water fairy um i will also just show you I'll put this to one side have a slightly different format oh it's popping open i told you it was full uh slightly different format today i'm going to show you how to um what what you're going to get in into the maker's box and then i will show you how to make the wings and then i will show you how to um, do some of the technique of the horses namely how to mix the wool it's a really great way of making the different colored horses in there and also how to mix the manes if you need to have them a uh, multicolored so the um, maker's box comes in the same size as the surprise box, which, um, you know, there it does lot, fit a lot of wool, especially when you um, sit on it and squish it. Not that we physically sit on it, but we really do squish it all down. There you go. That's the Dartmoor Pony. 
Um, the idea with the Dartmoor pony has come uh, from the fact that I live here on an estate that has got two Dartmoor ponies as part of the rewilding in the Forest of Dean. And um, when they first arrived, they were little fillies and they were like fluffy little teddy bears. And they do tend to have quite fluffy fur not, um, or t a coat. I don't know if you call it fur with horses. And, um, and of course, since I've had this idea of making them in miniature, they've all lost their their fluffy fur because it's um it's coming up for summer and they're also getting a bit older but our ponies are still like really cuddly and squishy and lovely and soft so let's have a look what's inside the maker's box there you go that is number 49 um the dartmoor pony if you don't know this already but a lot of our maker's boxes if you've missed out of, of them in the past we do turn them into a pack which means it's basically um a kit without tools and um and then you can um you can catch up if you want we also make the instructions available so if you just want to get the, the materials that you need to do it then you can um, get that too. I should just mention that we have got lots of seaside um, kits available now so we do an octopus uh, kit, um, a kit that makes two starfish, two seahorses and two turtles so these are available as part of our small needle felting kits range now and they sort of vary between 13 and 18 pounds so very affordable. Uh, talking about the previous makers boxes we've got a wolf kit this is actually a kit with tools that was a, a past makers box we've got a puffing pack that um again um, this this one is without tools and we've got a kingfisher kit and the kingfisher was part of a makers box before as well so the kit has got the tools in it again and um we've done quite a lot of wet felting well not that much but a little bit of wet felting last month and of course the the wet felted flower is on the back of our newsletter in june which is also available as a youtube tutorial and it stays on youtube so you can re watch this anytime if um even if you haven't got this newsletter or maybe you can use both to help you along right let's have a look in here that more pony. I always love it how these boxes get packed so lovingly. Look, doesn't that look nice? It's all nicely put together. It's not just squashed in there. A lot of um, care and love goes in there. Goes in there. So um, there we go. That's the a Dartmoor Pony box. It makes one pony, even though it looks like it should make more than one, but it makes one pony with our favorite lanolin rich core wool. Oh, I just I oh, have a little sniff now. Ah, oh, love it. Absolutely love that wool. Um, and then you have got um three colours here to mix and uh, make different colour ponies um to your liking basically also tells you on our newsletter what's coming up next which is the elephant and calf and that's another wire armature um construction so we've got we've had um the um the 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 piggies three little piggies last month so it's all wire 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 but um quite simplistic wire armature nothing too complicated the horse is a little bit more we're using an aluminium wire in this which i don't think we've had in uh, any of our boxes um before the instructions as always have got a centimeter measurement all of our instructions have got that here on the side so if we're referring to any measurements in centimeter you don't need your own tape measure you can just use the um the measurement here measurements here on the side gives you all the materials and then of course you've got templates so templates are always great because um that gives you a, a con an instant um feedback on on what size you're aiming for and then you've got the step-by-step -step instructions um, of how to make the project and then when you get to the point where you're coloring it in flip all the way to the back of the page because here you have got the different um, pot potentially the different color ponies that you could be making so whether it is a, a, a quite a dark one which is similar to the one that um, I've made here or whether it is one that has got mainly white and then some brown flecks which is very similar to this one the flecks are a little bit lighter but I will show you in the technique in the technical side of how to do things here how to mix the wool and you will be amazed how many different colors you can achieve just by using three colors or you can make a dark one with a with a a lighter mane uh, which is why we've got two different types of tops in there from a really dark top um, to 
a white top. So you've got, you can design your own pony. Of course, this is a Dartmoor pony, but there's more here. Um, if you want, in fact, these are our ponies. These are the pictures that I have taken. So these are the ponies. This is um, um, Luna and Raven um, here when they first came to um, the wilderness center in the forest of Dean. They were um, they were only a few months old and um, that's what they looked like. So they definitely don't look like that anymore. They're a lot more, um, they look a little bit more like teenage ponies now. So... So that's um, that is uh, what's in the box, and I will just show it to you here. In the, it's a really big wad of uh, lanolin rich core, lots to um, to use. You get um, the Portuguese merino, which is a lovely short fibered um, wool bat that felts perfectly if you're trying to sort of give it a, a nice soft teddy bear like look. You have got the Fox Ross Brown New Zealand merino in there, which is one of my favorite wools to mix, and then you have got the New Zealand natural. Um, white in there as well. So these three colors will um, allow you to make any variation of top coat and I will show you how to mix these colors very shortly. And then you have a choice between just a white um, tail and mane or brown or a combination of these two or even a combination where you mix a bat into it. And this is, like I said, the technique I will be showing you. You also get in there your aluminum wire need quite a lot. This is obviously you need to cut shorter for different parts. And if um, and then you get um, a mix of silk clay here to make the little hoofs for the pony. So you have um, you have more in there than you you uh, you will need for the hoofs, but you have an option again in terms of color. So you can mix the two or stay just with um, brown, they sometimes have almost sort of like a pinkish, um, beigey color um, hoof. So you can you can choose this again, mix the two or not. You get your glue in eyes in there. So they have um, these black glue in eyes. And um, you get a, this, on this one, you get a twisted needle because the lanolin rich core is actually, it doesn't like coarse needles very much. It's quite a dense fiber already. And then the lanolin sort of bonds it even more, which makes it such a perfect core wool because it's very, it's kind of, when I say sticky, I mean it in a good way. So we thought, let's put a coarse twisted needle in it because the coarse twisted needle loves the lanolin rich core wool and you will love the coarse needle, um, the coarse twisted needle, I promise you. So there's an, an extra uh, needle there in, in, and if you've never used the twisted needles, be aware, once you open that door, you can never close it again. So don't use this needle if you don't want to be um, impressed by it. Of course, if you want to make two ponies, then um, our aluminium wire this one here is in the sub club this month. And um, so you can just buy more of the wool. You already have quite a lot of the top cover that um, allows you to make two, including the manes and the tail wool. Um, you will just have to get more of the lanolin rich, lanolin rich core wool. You've probably got enough of the silk clay to make two as well, but you will need to get some extra eyes. Okay, so that's basically, let's move straight into mixing wool. For the ponies, I'm just going to put all these bits that we don't need back in the box, which basically is just the lanolin rich core wool. Put that to one side and I will be going onto the overhead camera now to show you how to mix, um, how to mix the different wools to make them fit for the Dartmoor pony. So this is uh, just a very short tutorial on how to mix the wools to um, give the Dartmoor pony a nice, a nice varied look. And then I'll also show you how to make the, um, the tail and the mane. Right, let's start with mi mixing wools. Now, as you can imagine, mixing these two will just make um, a variation of the rust fox brown or the white. So you're in charge of how um how this this should look like so there these are um these two are roughly the same quantity so what you need to do is you lay them on top of each other and this is a good tutorial for mixing any kind of wool you lay them on top of each other and then you tear them apart with your thumb and whatever other finger you want to use and what's really important because these are even though these are butts and the wool is already sort of crisscrossed keep them in the same direction so when you if you tear them that way you also put them on top of each other like that again so what you're not doing is you're not putting it 
like that. You're keeping it running in the same direction. And that makes a nice flat mix. Now you can mix it so thoroughly that at the end of it, you have a really, really even colored um, mix, or you can keep it mottled. It depends how you want um, the end effect to be. So what you're actually doing is you're you're not uh, severing the fi fibers, you're teasing them apart, you're letting them slither away so that you're mixing them together. And that way um, you can create a whole new color mix. So this works with um, different colors as well. So if you if you want to make an orange and you haven't got orange, but you've got yellow and um, and red, then you can mix the two together and you can make orange. And that works obviously across the whole color palette. So make gray from black and white, make green from blue and yellow, make purple from red and blue. And, um, and if you mix all the colors together, you just get a murky brown. Just, just you do with paint. So this has made um, quite a nice sort of color mix. I love this mix, particularly if you're making any other um, animals. Uh, it's often found in dogs, whether that is Jack Russells or um, um, even even sort of in um, maybe in Labradoodles. In I'm just trying to think hard. It might even be in in a yellow lab where where they so sometimes have a bit of a gingery color coming through. It's a really really good color to use. Now, if you have this color and you think, oh, that's turned out a bit light, I wanted it to be much darker, then just add a little bit more of the color into it that you want it to be stronger off. So it's as simple as that. You can actually um, change the color by just adding more of the other color in. If you imagine you mix paint, and you want to make a pale pink from white and red, you just know that you have to keep adding more white to make it nice and pale. And if it gets too um, pale, then you add a little bit more of the red in. So it's it, it's sort of working um, how how you want the color to be. And um, of course, similarly, if, if you think this is too dark, then just take a little bit of white and mix this in. What I've been really keen to do is that I've got um, colors here that you can that that sort of in terms of the type of the fiber um, work um, with with you by mixing it so they're not they're not like diff two different fibers the, the these two are obviously in New Zealand anyway so they're the same type of wool but you have a chance um, of, of mixing them together without um, them not wanting to mix if you see what I mean so that um, is now the difference between the two of them making one darker and one lighter. And that is a really good color to um, add onto your pony if you're giving it brown flecks. So you make the base white and then you're giving it brown flecks. Or maybe you just want it to be this color all together and give it a white mane like some of the ponies that we've, like this this um, here one here that we've seen um, on the picture, this one here. That has got, oh, I've got a wet set of instructions now because I've got my bowl here ready for the wings and there must have been a bit of a water drop. No, the bowl's not leaking. Um, so sorry about this, got wet instructions now. So you can make a mix for this uh, particular pony um, um, and so on. So I'm going to move this out of the way because that's what happens when you work with well, wet well. Now, in terms of mixing tops, it works very much the same way. So you um, you can um, break off a little bit off the top. So do this lengthways rather than splitting it from the from this way. Do it lengthways because especially if you're making a tail or a mane, you want to maintain that length. And then you can uh, use a little bit of another color. Again, you can just mix it, let the fiber slither away from each other. So you're teasing it apart rather than tearing the fiber, uh, severing the fiber. And that way you can make a mix. Sometimes, um, especially if you're doing manes on ponies, they actually have got, this would be a perfect mix where you've got one part that's really dark and brown and then it sort of gradually goes into a lighter color. That is something that can, can um, easily happen on ponies. Just study a picture if you want to follow a particular model or maybe you've got a pony at home and you know exactly what you're doing anyway. And, um, and that way you can make a mix um, with two tops. Again, add more of one or the other color if you need it to be um, more or the other color. And then what you can also do is you can mix 
um, a top with a bat. So this New Zealand Merino, even though it looks short fibered, is actually in itself is quite a long fiber. So you can mix the two together. It's probably a bit too much. By just the main thing is that you're keeping these fibers running uh, parallel. Um, so don't crisscross them. Just keep them running in the same direction, and that way you will get a nice um, even mix. Sometimes if you've mixed in too much, you can just take it out, as I have done here, because you might just want a sort of a little hint of of ginger in there, um, and you just keep doing that until you've got the right mix for your little. Um, creature that you're making and then you can attach it accordingly and I will also just show you very quickly how to attach it because I've got a pony here that's waiting for a tail and the mane for that matter so mix it add a little bit more of one or the other color if need be and um, and that way you you have plenty of um, of tops here to give your pony a nice um, bushy mane and a nice uh, long tail as well. So that's um, how I've mixed the tops now. If you have got carders, then you can use your carders as well. Um, I've got one. I've got one of each size. In fact, I don't. I don't even think we sell one of these. But anyway, that's what I've got. Um, we do sell a couple of um, these, so I'm just going to show you. You might have to use a smaller quantity and definitely have a clean card, which I haven't even got. Take all the old fibers out because they do get mixed otherwise. And then all you're doing is you're just literally carding it from one to the other. Take it off and get a nice long mix. There you go. And um, and that mixes it a lot more thoroughly as well. You can use that uh, with tops as well. So if you have got a carder, then use that. If you've only got one carder, you can do what we call flick carding. And um, that basically means that you're holding it in one hand and you're just flicking it off with um, your carder to take it onto the other one. So that is how you mix the wool and you can see that the mixing is now becoming really really um, thorough so now I've just got to straighten the fibers out again and that you can do by um, pulling the wool so now I've got a very very thorough mix between the two colors where you can where it's almost turned into a beige you can hardly see that ginger that I've mixed into it whereas before it was more streaky like that so that is what you can do with carders and then when you've got your pony ready to have a, a tail attached um, then you um, you obviously attach the tail tease it out a little bit and then um, put it to the back of the pony like this you can take some of the longer fibers out use your felting needle and stab it into its bum keep that sort of quite concentrated where you're stabbing it in so you're not not having too flat an area there and stab it in for now and then you can cover the join up in a minute so just make sure that it's on and that the tail looks right here and then all the wool here on the top um, you you can um, cover up with a bit of wool you could give it a, a brown spot on on the back of the bum here now so you could actually use some of the wool that you've mixed or I've mixed earlier I can just put on there and this is how you would attach um, a spot maybe make it make it a bit lopsided it always looks nice when they're not completely symmetrical and that way you can do two things add a patch of wool and also add um, add a patch of brown but also cover the join where the tail was attached but you could also just use white wool to cover um, that join up so that it it, um, it isn't so obvious that you've just attached a tail so that's like adding a spot um, onto the pony and giving it its tail and then for the mane um, mix another batch of wool go so on here, for example, where it's got this really dark uh, ginger color, that's where you might want the mane to be um, a lot more ginger than white. So make a nice um, batch of, of a darker ginger color mane there. 
And then uh, where it's just white, the mane could also just be white. So that's, um, and, and what with ponies, what you often find is that they have the mane hanging to one side. So you can, um, obviously you don't have to have it exactly like a middle parting and have it hanging down. And what I have done is because the wool is actually not long enough to have a, to fasten it in the middle and then have it hanging down each side or fold it over to hang it down on, on one side. I just attach it at the top. So, um, put the put the top so that it's here and then just felt it on uh, you may want a couple of of sometimes they have sort of a couple of strands hanging out the other side so I'm attaching the 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 mane here onto the side of the head you will have to just stab into it going along it just so that it, it's actually the wool is not heavy enough to hang down so you will have to just stab along um, the where it's hanging down and then give your pony a nice a nice fringe as well use that main wool to do it the the wool as in the main m um, as an m a n e um, rather than m i n and that way you can give it a nice fringe as well by having it sort of hanging down its face. You can see already just by doing this, you you um, you finish your pony off and gives it a really nice look. Again, you might have to just stab a little bit into it, but don't fasten it on, just allow it so that it's actually hanging um, over its face rather than um, sticking up like a, like a Mohican. And that's basically how you mix wool and how you attach um, a tail and mane onto the horse. And, um, and I hope that has um, helped you get your little pony looking a little bit more pony-like. So <clears throat> that's um, all with the ponies um, done now. And now I'm going to move on to show you how to wet felt um, the wings for the water fairy or any fairy actually because it doesn't have to be just for that fairy it could be for another fairy as well and um i don't really know i think there's something leaking with this bowl is the bowl leaking or maybe i don't know i think there might be a crack in the bowl so i need to put it on a cloth so that can soak it up rather than um, seeping into my instructions that are here. So for for um, for this particular wet felting, you can use um, you can use the 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 proper stuff that we sell, which is um, the mat here, that one here. That's a wet felting mat. You can use that, but if you haven't got that, you don't need to buy it. You can also just use um, an old one one of our old. Um, one of our old bags if you can peel the sticker off and peel it off so it, it could also be cling film um it it doesn't have to be like a fully equipped wet felting um kit that you need for this just need you need something that is waterproof basically so you could use um one of our bags cut it in half and open it up that way and um what i will do is i will look at the instructions because i'm notorious for making up new stuff so i'm going to remind myself how i've done it if you have got bubble wrap that will work as well um but a, just a plain a plain plastic bag will work too this is even though it's wet felting we're not solidly felting this like we have done with the flowers in one of our previous tutorials we're just felting it enough so that it holds together for a soft set of wings also we don't want to have too much weight on the wings because they need to be on the back of the fairy and i'm just going to go overhead so i show you now how to wet felt the wings for a fairy in speci specifically for the water fairy in our um, june fairy box june 21 fairy box and so you lay the fibers out um, on your bag as you want the wings to run already so be so do it um, in small amounts so I'm, I'm doing it going some this way and going some going that way but they need to sort of touch because they need to felt together so lay them out how you would like the wings to um, you know so that it's like a wing shape basically so you can already manipulate some of that from the outset make sure that the fibers do touch so even though you're laying them out to the side and then you you might not use all of it by the way and then just use a little bit of the blue 
um, to color it in a little bit more. In fact, we're going to put the white on first because the these plant fibers they don't naturally um, they don't naturally felt on their own. They need to be trapped by um, by the wool. So we're putting the white fibers down first, and then we lay the blue fibers over the top. You don't have to use all of them. This you want to make something delicate. It's hard for us sometimes to weigh because we don't weigh anything that's less than one gram. So sometimes you need less than one gram, but we don't put less than one gram in, in if that makes sense. So we, we tend to just give you a bit extra and be generous than um, be stingy and give you the exact amount. But you don't always have to use everything that is there. So have, have a bit extra and put it in your stash. And then um, the other thing that you need is you need some soap which I have got here. I just need to grab. Excuse me, I just need to get it. Ah, oh, come on, soap. If you don't know this yet, but we do have um, our own um, wet felting soap that we now sell as well. It comes in three different flavors, so to speak. One is, oh, I'll try and get me, let me get this right. One is a lavender. One is geranium, orange and geranium, and one is rose. I think I did get this right. So whichever one you're using, all you need to do is just make, um, have a little bit of soapy water. Whether you do this by just, um, sorry, you can't really see, by just sort of rubbing a bit of soapy water in there and then dribbling that soapy water onto your wings. So you do want this to be soapy, but you don't, it doesn't need to be that soapy. So don't, empty if you're using like a liquid soap don't empty half the bottle into it in fact i've learned that less soap is 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 better because you have to rinse all the soap out anyway again so just add a little bit of um of soapy water over the top make sure it gets totally wet so you do need to make sure it's wet even though it might not be um, as much soap as you imagine there needs to be and then you fold what i've used is one of our bags you fold that over and then you just distribute the water inside it works if you've got slippy hands so this is very similar to what we did with the wet felted flowers but we're not going to felt it as as solidly as we we just want it to stick together so if you were to needle felt this you would just probably needle felt it a little bit on your felting mat that's not quite oh it's getting there and remember that this these wings will be pinched in the center when they're done. So at the moment, all we want to do is make sure that you can sort of um, keep these wing bits nice and separate. So once you've got it wet, you can either use your hands by felting it or you can fold it over and just give it a good old rub. It does work a bit faster if you've got a pattern on there or... Um, um, a rough surface like with bubble wrap or with our felting mat but it, it also works without so don't stress if you haven't got the right stuff just use some cling film or a plastic bag and um, and that way you can do it too and that's already felting so this is already um, a joined up piece of um, of um, of fabric now and um, and you can of course manipulate it a little bit more from both sides um i the way that i've done the wings is that i've only felt it that i've only added the color on one side so the side that you can actually see and that's also the side i've decorated and so just give it a, a bit of a rub make sure that the the wool it doesn't have to be like with the flowers where it becomes literally one fabric just make sure it stays on there to create a set of delicate wings that's what we're doing so it's not like um, a solid wet felt and once once you've done this you do need to rinse this out it looks very beautiful from the side where you haven't added the colors too because that um, seashell shimmer has got yellows and pinks and all kinds all kinds of color going through it and i really like it when the ends are kept wispy like this because that will add to the wispiness and the the delicacy of the of the delicacy is that the right word isn't that what you eat um anyway whatever um the delicate appearance of the wings 
and um, and that's basically all you do is and then when you wash when you rinse it out and later on you pinch the center together so you've got a really nice shape there almost like a butterfly but um, you do need to rinse all of this out in in water which I haven't got any separate water to rinse it out now but I'm gonna rinse my hands out fingers out and then you let it dry and when it's dry I'm just gonna put this to one side when it's dry then you will have wings that look like that so the wings will look from the back like that and one once they're dry and once they're um they're nice and you know obviously yeah definitely not wet anymore then you can add these little gemstones onto it that will come in your uh, fairy pack as well I'll just show you this overhead so you can see it a little bit better there you go there's the so that's what I meant about keeping the you can trim the wings of course but you can also just leave these wispy ends and then you have plenty of these um, nice little blue um, gemstones that you can glue onto it um, and they're they're quite light so th um, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you decorate quite a few on there they're not they're not making the wings too heavy because you also have got very light weight here with the wings as well and that is basically how you do the wings on the on the water fairy but of course you can w make wings for any fairy that way use a different um choose different colors um choose yeah just maybe choose a different um shape as well so that you can shape them with your hands as you're wet felting them and that's basically um all of the boxes covered now i've made an almighty mess here let's tidy this away i've saturated is this bowl leaking i think it might be because it's coming out there must be a crack in it that i can't see yes i think i've got a leaky bowl um anyway that's um that's all about the sub boxes in june um remember you can make let's put her back in in that little container there you can hang this fairy up or she can just sort of perch on uh, on something you can um um you can watch all of this again on Thursday on our Facebook live streaming at 7 p.m. It stays on YouTube as well and we usually extract the technical bits and just plonk them onto YouTube separately so you don't have to watch all of it again if you just specifically want to find out how to mix wool, how to make the mane and the tail for the horses or how to make the wings for the fairies. Um, that will be in our, in our playlist under the um, respective topics. Um... I will just let you know so too that um, we're counting down to the advent calendar release. So advent calendars 2021, you can pre-order them from the 25th of June. We have a limited of, um, amount of numbers. So please do be ready so that um, I would I would say that it will probably take sort of maybe a week before they sell out. So if you're if even if you don't get them on the first day you should be able to go ooh, oh dear hang on that's wrong right you should be able to get them um hopefully within a week so be ready in your start um I, some people have mentioned that could 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 we still have some um, a little bit later as well and what we could do is if you're really desperate to have them but you haven't been paid yet <laughs> And you can't be without an advent calendar do get in touch with us and we will reserve you one um we don't want to do it for everybody but we will do it for those who are really desperate so do get in touch and um and then um a week or two weeks later we will release another advent uh, project which is going to be a, a wall hanging called animals in the wood and you won't know yet what it will look like you just have to trust us that um every week you can add a little bit to this um wonderful beautiful um scene that you will be creating and if you have watched any of our landscape um tutorials and if you know anything about how we do landscapes then you you know that it will be an absolutely amazing beautiful scene um and that will also be supported by us throughout the advent time and i cannot believe i'm talking about christmas now but here you go it's um nearly midsummer and hopefully we'll get a nice uh, summer too and then remember that next 
the next live stream is making um, dragonflies and they would be perfect um, to go with a water fairy or even with a dragonfly fairy, which is obviously um, the July fairy box theme. So do join join um, join us for that. And that is at our usual time at 1 p.m. on YouTube. Today is exceptional that it's 11 um, o'clock for our unwrapping. And then also remember we will be doing the bees the following weekend, uh, not weekend, Tuesday, which is the 15th of June at 1 p.m. And then to finish it off um, June, we will have two sessions of the Peacock Butterfly for which you can get your kit now and then um, make along with us. The Peacock Butterfly kit makes two. It looks like that. And um, it's in our um, normal kit repertoire. So you can buy that now and be ready to make the butterflies. We always give a list of all the ingredients that you need for our make along. So if you haven't got a kit, you can use your own stash as well. And certainly with a, a dragonflies, um, that's a bit of a, a stash buster as Emma calls it. So you could um, just use some of your um, Angelina fiber, some tops. And, um, and if you've got pipe cleaners, then you're already in the business of making um, not just one, but lots of dragonflies. And um, I think that's, give us the thumbs up. Um, everybody who's watching, we are, we are um, almost getting to the next round number on, on YouTube subscribers. So we do need your help. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet, because then you get um, the first, you get the notifications when we're on next. We usually have one, at least one um, new release either a live stream or a tutorial or video or whatever on uh, per per week. So we keep you well in the loop. Remember, you can join our new Facebook group that um, is the is the spoiler group for the surprise box. If you no longer want to be surprised, you don't have to be surprised anymore. You now can see what's happening in there. And there's already some photos in that Facebook group of the ice cream surprise box. So please, all we ask is ask answer the questions. We just want to make sure that you really know that um, the surprise will be spoiled and that you not go running off and tell other people about it because some people do like surprises um unbelievably they do um yeah weird concept to me and maybe to you but it isn't to many many other people and i think that's all i've got to say so um take care everybody have a lovely um rest of a sunny week hopefully um wherever you are but most definitely in the UK. And then I will see you again next um, next Tuesday. And we're going to do some amazing buzzing dragonflies. Until then, take care, everybody. Bye.